Hi everyone, Aubrey here for IELTS Energy TV. Today's episode, we interview Fumika, and she shares the tips and strategies she used to write the Writing Wizard Winner essay. And she lets you know how she was able to improve her IELTS speaking score from a five to a seven, two whole band points. So you definitely don't want to miss this one. And guys, to find out your estimated band score and get free resources for your level, go to allyoursenglish.com slash IELTS quiz. All right, enjoy the interview. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. And Fumika, we have a special guest. Can you introduce yourself? Um, okay, I'm, my name is Fumika. Uh, I'm from Japan. And um, yeah, I live in Japan as well right now. Um, yeah, thank you for having me today. Yes, welcome. We're excited to have you here. Fumika was the winner of our Writing Wizard contest this past month. And for any of you who don't know what that is, in our Three Keys Facebook group, we have a competition where students can submit an essay. We grade them and we choose a winner. And Fumika's essay was excellent. So we're going to talk about that, all the amazing things you did, which made it the highest scoring essay. And we want to talk about your IELTS journey. I'm excited excited to have you here. Um, so first of all, let's talk about your essay. I was so impressed, Fumika, by um, the transition phrases you used. You used very high level linking phrases. So tell us, how did you, um, you know, maybe share some of the three key strategies you learned? How did you learn to use transition phrases so well? Okay, uh, first of all, uh, like before, um, before signing up, um, like three case course, I I had no clue uh, to uh, like how to write essays at all, and uh, yeah, like after uh, signing up the three K course, I learned so many great um, reading words and uh, vocabularies and and uh, yeah, like how to write essay as a whole, like. And then, yeah, that's it. Like, that's that's very helpful and um, like effective way to um, boost my like scores and um, like my whole like yeah entire um, like ways to like writing way. <laughs> so yes, yes, exactly right. Your mm -hmm. that's the thing is before students um, start studying for the IELTS exam before they get into three keys IELTS, they d they don't always understand first of all how to write an IELTS essay, but how to get a high cohesion coherence score, how to use linking phrases and transition words to get that seven or higher. So I can see you used all of those strategies that you learned in the course. I want to read a few of the linking phrases that you use which are so high level and I'd love for other students to be able to use them. I have your essay here. So first of all, in your first sentence, you said, so first of all, just for anyone who doesn't know, the topic was about cyberbullying, that cyberbullying has become a major problem among adolescents and, you know, what are the consequences and how can it be stopped? So first sentence, prior to the proliferation of social networking services, comma, cyberbullying was, cyber was unheard of. What a high level way to start your essay, right? This really high level vocabulary in this linking phrase. Everything's perfect. Punctuation's perfect. All the vocabulary is very high level. So impressive, right? And then later in your first body paragraph, you have this great linking phrase, due to those twisted perceptions, comma, children, especially who are gullible, get involved in its perilous phenomena. What a great sentence. You have this amazing band nine vocabulary, this fantastic band nine linking phrase due to those twisted perceptions. So <laughs> some of these I see from three keys, you're using a lot of the linking phrases that we showed you, but you're also adding high level vocabulary that you've learned on your own. So I would love to let us know, let, your, let our listeners know, what are you doing? What are some advice, some tips you're doing to increase your vocabulary, to learn those high level vocabulary words? 
Yeah, what I did, what I did uh, to um, like enhance my writing skills uh, was that reading uh, like article that I'm very interested in. Um, like for me, it was uh, something related to like politics or like uh, networking services stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, which, which is not um, like. If it is maybe, yeah, very, it's maybe like, not everyone's cup yeah. of tea, but hey, yeah. if that's what you're interested in, yes, read what you're interested in, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And so you're learning high level vocabulary there. Are you adding it to a vocabulary notebook? What is your process? Yeah, yeah. Um, like uh, every time I like I read article and I was like, yeah, this, uh, these uh, vocabularies um, must be very useful. And then I'm, I'm gonna use it later. And um, yeah, um, after that, I like wrote down uh, a couple of, a couple of phrases and vocabularies um, that I would like to um, like, um, like write and use. Um, mm -hmm yeah, in the future. And yeah, yeah that, that I, was very helpful. I think that's the key is how intentional you were about it, right? You're reading mm -hmm. something and then you're looking for specific vocabulary words that you know are going to be useful in the future for IELTS writing. And so then you're adding those in context, knowing these words I will be able to use in the future for this topic or for lots of different essays. If they're like adjectives, like twisted, the adjective <laughs> twisted to be able to use that instead of you know, uh, difficult or negative or whatever, a little more common word. Twisted is such a higher level word that is used much less commonly to describe something like perceptions. That's what's pushing that score up to band eight, band nine for your vocabulary because students don't use it. Students don't use the word twisted to describe something like that. And you should guys out there listening, right? Take this advice from Fumika, use adjectives like that that are less common and add those to your vocabulary notebook, add those, plan on using them because you can describe so many different things that way and boost that vocabulary score. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Fumika, I want to ask you about, um, we were chatting before we started recording and Fumika let me know she took the test recently, the IELTS exam, and something very surprising happened that we want to <laughs> let you guys know about so you can be aware this is a possibility. Can you share with us your experience? Yeah, for sure. Um, the long story short, uh, the order was completely opposite that I was expecting. Um, so on the test day, the first one uh, was um, like writing and then um, like reading came afterwards and uh, last, lastly, um, like reasoning. And I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> I, I, I had a crew S <laughs> and um, yeah, definitely um, like it get, it got anxious. Like it got me. It made you anxious. Yeah, yes. it made me anxious. Which so is understandable. Much. It was not what you're expecting to have to do the writing test right away. And you were letting me know you, you often experience anxiety anyway, if something is different than you expect, if something sort of throws you off. And yeah, yeah that's, uh, I think that's a normal reaction when you're like, okay, I'm going to have the listening exam first. I'm ready for that. And then after I do listening and reading, I'll be ready for writing. And instead they give you the writing exam right away. Yeah. And this is not common. You know, students out there will probably be very surprised if they've taken the IELTS exam before because the order for them was listening and then reading and writing. It's yeah, not that happens totally, often. totally. Um, like, actually, I took IELTS exams a couple uh, a couple of times uh, when I was in college, and um, all of them were um, like order, um, like listening, reading, writing. Yeah, like these orders. Yeah, and then as um, maybe like I was thinking at the time was like um, um, the order, um, maybe like the system. Uh, was changed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it definitely, you know, it's a possibility as we know, it's very rare. I hadn't heard of it happening anywhere else. Let us know, where did you take um, the exam? What, um, where was this testing yeah. center? I took exam um, in Nagoya city, um, like located 
Aichi Prefecture uh, here in Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, like bef like in the past, I took IELTS, like Osaka Prefecture and Kyoto Prefecture. Um, but that never happened before. Right. It was always the order you expected. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think our advice for students is you never know, right? They can give the essay out of order. It doesn't happen often, but because it's a possibility, you should definitely call the test center ahead of time and confirm, double check and say what order will the exams be given in, just so that you mm -hmm. know for sure. We know that you also need to ask, um, you know, do I have to wear a mask? Should I bring my own pencil? Because these days there are some things that are different because of COVID. So when you make that call to ask these things, also just confirm, say, can you let me know the order of the exams? Will I be given yeah. the listening exam first and just confirm and they'll let you know so that you're prepared so that it doesn't throw you off if mm -hmm. you get there on test day and they give you the writing exam first and that can that can definitely throw you off. And we don't want that to happen to you guys. Yeah, especially people who are very worry wart like me. <laughs> so, yeah. I love the expression worry wart. Yes, <laughs> right? If you're a worry wart, <laughs> if, you, if you worry about things, you just, you don't want to have, that's one less thing to worry about. You can yeah. call and know the, um, the order of the exam in advance. And it, because it can, it can cause anxiety and you want to control what you can. We say that all the time, control what you can, know mm -hmm. everything you can about the testing center ahead of time. Don't be afraid to call them and double check anything that you're wondering about for sure. Yeah, so true, so true. Yeah. Okay, Fumika, I wanna ask you about speaking because you scored a seven on your speaking exam. Mm -hmm. And what were, um, when you took the IELTS exam previously, what were your speaking scores before getting into Three Keys IELTS? Oh uh, yeah, like my highest score at the time was uh, five point zero, five point five. Yeah, I don't okay. actually remember though. Yeah. And so you improved from a five to a seven for IELTS speaking. So can you share with our listeners what are some of the strategies you use? What are some tips you can share for that amazing increase? Two whole band points for your speaking exam. Mm hmm. Okay. I think. Uh, like before um, getting uh, getting into this journey, this IELTS journey, uh, like I had a like a lot of some assumption that uh, like since I live in Japan, there there are no opportunities to uh, use English, and uh, I can't uh, like I don't have any anyone uh, who can uh, practice English speaking skills. Uh, but that was all wrong. Um, and uh, yeah, like, like you guys said, um, like practicing uh, makes perfect or stuff like that. So, yes, practice <laughs> makes what... perfect for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, like I, like I was, yeah, I found uh, like those who can speak, those who can practice English here in Japan, even, yeah. Like, even if, like, no matter what happened, yeah, in my daily life. So, then, yeah, I, I think I spoke English almost every day with them. Okay, yeah. so you found speaking partners that you could speak with every day. So, then you were practicing. You were practicing every day. Yeah. And you felt your speaking skills improve. Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, excellent. And, uh, and also, uh, since... Uh, probably uh, people who come from uh, who, who come from like Japan or some other like Eastern Asian countries uh, like are likely to have a little confidence to speak English or like exp express yourself uh, by using other another languages. Um, but yeah, and I was uh, one of them, of course, and then. So, yeah, I was thinking that, like, what kind of methods I can utilize uh, in order to uh, get, uh, like, powerful confidence, like, confidence. Yes. <laughs> and then, yeah, I was, uh, I was using a mirror, um, like, uh, while talking, uh, like, while like speaking English and also even I was recording myself and check uh, like my confidence or like speaking speaking styles yeah 
Pretty much. Okay, awesome. So you were speaking in the mirror and also practicing with speaking partners, recording yourself. So you were using lots of the strategies that we're teaching to yeah. improve your confidence, right? Definitely. And just to practice, practice speaking. And mm -hmm. what about, um, I know you took a personal coach class for yes. speaking and what was advice that you were given in that class that you oh, were able yeah. to use on test day? Yeah, all of them were very like productive, first of all. And then, yeah, on the for, on the test day, I used uh, lots of filler phrases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, Avery, uh, you told told me uh, like in um, like personal coach classes. So yeah, and then it was very like it relieved uh, my like anxieties and um, yeah, but rather like get more confident to express myself. Okay, so to know you had those filler phrases, you practiced them, you knew you could use them, relieve some anxiety. I can see that because when we had our personal coach class, there were some pauses, some hesitation that was pulling down your um, fluency score. So we talked about filler phrases that you can use to fill that space. So you have a, a second or two to think, you know, yeah. things that you can say where you don't have to think about it, right? Yeah. And that makes a huge difference. And especially... Um, you know, raising your fluency score, but raising your confidence, like you said, so that you don't have that anxiety, you know, like, I've got this, I've, I know plenty of phrases so that if I get a question, and I'm not <laughs> sure how to answer it, I can use a filler phrase to give myself a little time and keep your fluency score at that seven or higher. Yeah, and you did exactly. it, you got a seven on the speaking, <laughs> like, congratulations, that's so awesome. To go from a five to seven is huge, like that is commendable. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. That means a lot. And then, uh, yeah, like actually uh, the uh, questions, all of the questions are very like challenging to give an answer right away. Yeah, yeah. you uh, you're saying you had a lot of challenging questions. So you were glad you had those filler phrases. So yeah. that instead of having to think of an answer right away, you had something to say. So yeah, that's awesome. It's <laughs> definitely, that's key. So thank you, Fumika, for sharing with our thank listeners you. your experience. So frustrating that you were thrown off by the test being out of order. I think really, really... Um, you know, I'm grateful that you're willing to come on and share your experience with our listeners so that hopefully none of you out there listening have that same negative experience. We don't want that to happen to you to get that anxiety. So call the test center before just to double check. And Fumika, thank you so much for joining us today. This was so helpful. So interesting. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Bye. Bye.